in the fermions. Okay, so that's, that's, if you like, the basis, the mathematical basis, the mathematical um, set of rules that goes with the Pauli exclusion principle. It can't put two particles into the same state, the fermions. Now, what about when the spin? Well, when the spin, the easiest way to think about it is just to add another, for each particle, instead of saying the wave function is only a function of position, think of it as a function of position and spin. So in that way, you can think of the wave function as a function of position, and let's say whether it's up or down. We could choose sigma z here, z component of spin. This wave function has the following meaning. It's square, sorry, it, it's magnitude, it's squared magnitude is the probability to find a particle at position x with spin either up or down, depending on whether you put in sigma z equals 1 or sigma z equals minus 1. So it's a function of a continuous variable and a discrete variable plus or minus 1. And it represents the amplitude, the probability amplitude for the particle to have a certain location with a spin either up or down. Once you know that, then you say, okay, the wave function for many particles one here stands for the particle, not whether it's x, y, or z. x2, two, two, so forth and so on. This representing the wave function for a particle to be at position 1 with spin sigma 1 position 2, and spin sigma 2, and so forth and so on. And now the rule is exactly the same that if you take all of the, all of the stuff that's associated with particle 1, that's both x and sigma, and you take the things which are associated with particle 2 and switch them, Bosons, nothing happens, the fermions, the spin change, uh, sorry, the, the sign changes. All right, but what it boils down to is exactly what we said in the first place. You simply can't put two particles into the same state, including spin. Including the spin if they're fermions and if they're bosons. Okay, any questions about that so far? Yeah. Um, you know what this sort of reminds me a little bit is, is that you've got a bunch of things and you kind of interchange them for Fermi, and then you get a minus sign. So it makes me think about the, the, the permutation, you know, the, the minus sign group of permutations. Well, this is, this, this, these are the representations of permutation group. Okay, so, this, so that comes into this. Yeah. Okay. yeah, switching the particles is a permutation. And what happens to them under permutation, a plus or minus sign, defines a representation of the permutation group. But that's a very definite thing to do with permutation. So, it not only reminds you of it, it is it. You wrote that as the product. Why not the sum? Oh no, the sum, the sum of two wave functions for one is a wave function for one particle. It's simply the superposition of... Um, to build a theory of two particles, the state vectors are the tensor products, are in a tensor product space of the, wa of the wave functions that depend on two variables. And, uh, no, you wouldn't want to add them. Adding them would correspond to putting a single particle into a superposition of states. Right. So, right, there's two things you can do if you have two wave functions. You can take a single particle and put it in the sum of the two of them, or you can take two particles and put one in one and one in the other, and one in one and one in the other, the rule is 
So um, here we have uh, two particles uh, swapping the particles. Here's what? Interference effect. Well, so far we, so far I have not. It, uh, it certainly does give interference effects. Uh, uh, we haven't talked about interference yet. I may talk a little bit about interference later and the effects of these things. <laughs> Indeed. You, that's right. You could say the Pauli exclusion. All right, fine. You could say the Pauli exclusion principle is a manifestation of a funny kind of interference where if you put the two particles in the same state they, and switch them, they interfere. Good. So yes, so it is a kind of interference phenomenon. You're right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, of course, when Pauli was doing it, he wasn't deriving the principle. It was an empirical fact. And he was, if you like, interpreting the principle, finding a mathematical framework in which the principle uh, uh, would be correct. Later on, of course, once uh, there was a relativistic theory of particles and uh, this rule here became part of the logic, inescapable logic, then there was a derivation of the, uh, of the equivalence principle, not the exclusion principle. He was trying at first to describe an empirical fact. Of course, once he realized this, that there was such a nice mathematics to it, undoubtedly he started looking for deeper reasons for the mathematics. And eventually he found them. He and uh, Dirac and... Uh, he and Dirac and he, Dirac and Einstein were the uh, were the, uh, the people who really built this and Bose and Fermi, I suppose. I don't know. If, you know, for the life of me, I, Fermi was a very, very great physicist who did many things. Excuse me, Giorgio. I don't want to insult the Italians, but uh, there he is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I don't understand what he had to do with any of this. Okay. Giorgio, uh, your homework is fine. <laughs> so, um, for a single particle, it's actually swapping two distinctual paths to interfere. There's some connection between those two things. Between what and what? Well, what you're doing is you're, yeah, um, you have two paths for two particles. This path where one goes this way, one goes this way, and another path where they cross over. They sort of wind up the same way. And with bosons, they add. With fermions, they uh, they can cancel. So it's, 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 it is connected with interference. But I, I didn't want to do that now. There is an in interesting interference experiment that you can do. Um, but let's uh, let's come to it later. Okay, that's the tail. That's that's one minus sign. Now uh, this sign will come back at us many many times. But there's another minus sign. That has to do not with exchange. This is the minus sign that has to do with exchange of particles. This is the minus sign that has to do with spin, but it has to do with rotation about an axis by 2 pi. Rotation by 2 pi is another process that you might expect does nothing. Right? You might expect rotation by 2 pi is a mathematical process that you can ma imagine in your head, but if you take a system and imagine mathematically rotating it by 2 pi, not, not grabbing it and rotating it, but mathematically just uh, performing a transformation which rotates it by 2 pi, you've done nothing to it. You've done nothing to it because the rotation by 2 pi it's just the identity rotation. It's the same as the identity rotation. 
than you think. Or I thought. You may not think. I did think. I did think at one time in my life. So you might say, okay, let's 